Well, I began work there in 1955, and we had training as to be psychiatric technicians. Uh, I, everybody, every trainee was required to have some type of uh, therapy, I guess you would call it, and I chose the. The water therapy? I chose the water therapy where you were inside a tub and it was covered and the water would flow constantly for an hour. And uh, later that day I didn't realize I was pregnant and I uh, had a miscarriage. I don't know if it was due to the water therapy or whatever. Anyway, I had a miscarriage. <coughs> And I wasn't allowed to work the wards at, after when I came back from that. But I could, I could do the classes like psychiatry and psychology and pharmacology, and all the classes that you know. But I couldn't go on the wards. And that was because you hadn't done one of those four trainings. No, that was because of, uh, I had a miscarriage and they wouldn't let me go back to work for a month. Oh, okay, just for a month. Yeah, so at that time, I just I just did the classes. And then I went back to work. Okay. And I worked in receiving and treatment. And uh, uh, the patients were very acutely ill. They were, some were very combative. Uh, most were very combative and confused. And, and we would have to take the patients upstairs for electric shock treatment. And uh, this one particular day, I, uh, I and this other psych tech went and took a patient up there. And the doctor was kind of the uh, uh, exhibitionist, I would say, almost. And he was, he was really showing us how to do this and how to do that. You know, and do that. Well, the in regards to the electric shock. In yeah, regards to the electric shock, and he gave her more than usual, I believe, and the patient died. And as far as I know, I don't know what they did because they told the other psych tech and I that we had to leave, and we left the ward. And I never went back and did like shock treatments again. And what was the name of the doctor? I told you. Yeah, you mentioned his name. And uh, Joyce, do you remember what we said his name was? Dr. Patel. Yeah, Dr. Patel. Patel. Okay. And uh, uh, as far as I know, the, the treatments continued, but we were never required to go back. Okay. And how were the electric shock treatments conducted? How did, uh, what was the procedure like? Well, the patient had, was sedated so that, you know, they wouldn't uh, hurt themselves. And uh, the technicians and us trainees would hold the patient, like their shoulders and their legs and their arms, so that they wouldn't thrash around and hurt themselves. And then he would, after we would put our hands on them to help them, he would do the shock treatment. Okay. And that was just, you said they just put something on their body like a stethoscope Yeah, well, they were, the little wires were attached, you know, like a, like a Tens EKG unit or, or something. something. Okay. And then he would put the instrument on their chest and they would go into the shock. Hmm. And they would, like... Mostly, it was supposed to be like two or three short shocks, and then the patient would recover and or awaken, and, and we would escort them downstairs. But in this particular case, the patient didn't awaken, and uh, we were told to leave. And so they stuck this thing on the per the patient's body, and then shocked him, and raised it up, and then shocked it yeah. again, and then raised it up, and shocked. You know how long it was in between each raising up and putting it back down? Was it like a second or a minute? Well, normally the ones that I saw before were like uh, maybe a minute or two they, where the patient would stop 
convulsing. But this particular patient, it was just one right after another. Okay. And, and was it the same doctor as before? Did you work with her? Yes. Each time? Yes. Hmm. Okay. I think he went from ward to ward, but I, I'm not sure. All right. So they, you don't know what happened to Dr. Pateau after that? No, I don't. Uh, I really don't. Okay. And you never saw electric shock treatments after that yourself? No. Okay. All right. Go ahead and tell me some more about your, uh, all of the stuff that, that you know about at Stockton Mental Hospital while you were there. People leaving or running away. Well, the ones that I, one, I worked on F1, and one of our patients escaped. They did find her and bring her back. Uh, the door was unlocked, I guess, in the back, in the back part. There were two doors you had to go through. So I was checking them one particular, right after that episode, to see if they were open. Well, the front first door was unlocked, so then I was going to go and check the other door. And a patient was standing there, and she tried to choke me. And she did a pretty good job. <laughs> we were going down the hall until we ran into somebody to help us. And wow. So. And the girl didn't escape, huh? No, she didn't escape. <laughs> I wish I could have. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off for just a second and check something out. So hold that thought. Okay.